Hello, this is Entropy. And this is Lucifera. Today we're continuing in the secret book of John, as I stated before. When you hear me reading, that will be the annotations by the author, Stephen Davies. And when you hear Lucy read, she will be reading from the actual text of the secret book of John. The Inexpressible One. The introduction is over. Here the revelation begins with the ultimate reality, the Platonic One. It would not be wrong to think here the Brahman of Hindu philosophy, that from which all reality flows and which is, in the final analysis, the only reali reality there is. Note that there is philosophical monism, that is, that there is an ultimate reality, only one being. As the text goes on, it will advocate the position of philosophical idealism, postulating the divine mental reality is all the reality there is, and that external material world is a mistaken notion. Ironically, many people, even scholars who should know better, declare that Gnosticism is a dualism based on two fundamental and opposed principles. Here we have the primary Gnostic text, spelling out an anti-dualistic perspective as strongly as it can. The word does not apparently become dualistic later on, but only by mistake. The ultimate fate of the world is to be monistic as it was in the beginning. The one rules all. Nothing has authority over it. It is the God. It is Father of everything. Holy One. The invisible one over everything. It is uncontaminated. Pure light, no eye can bear to look within. The main metaphorical descriptor for the one is light, which is connects back to the first in instant of Revelation to John, where he is blinded by light. The one is the invisible spirit. It is not right to think of it as a god or as like God. It is more than just God. The secret book of John takes pains to insist that the one is beyond description, literally inconceivable. No words are adequate to describe it. To say, for example, that the one is properly described with the word God is wrong. No words are adequate. It is more than anything you can think or say. The one is completely independent. It is the ultimate starting point, a pure point without dimension. It is what there was a microsecond before the Big Bang 13 and a half billion years ago, with everything existing in it but existing in nothing, because nothing is all that has come into being so far. Nothing is above it. Nothing rules it. Since everything exists within it, it does not exist within everything. Since it is not dependent on anything, it is eternal. Although the secret book of John is sometimes mythological, speaking of concepts as individuals, and sometimes ontological, concerning with the beings of things, it is constantly psychological, concerning with the unfolding in the mind of God. Here God exists in a state prior to self-consciousness. It is as Brahman is in the Upshans, pure sat, being, chit, consciousness, and not a bliss, and nothing else. Not only do humans have no capacity to know it, it does not yet know itself. Theologians have long observed that if God is beyond all human language, then God cannot be described or discussed. But if God cannot be described or discussed, how can human beings proceed to know God? All knowledge must ultimately be inadequate. In these verses, the secret book of John acknowledges the futility of human language and con conceptualization to encompass the one for whom, whom even the term God is insufficient. It is absolutely complete and so needs nothing. It is utterly perfect light. The one is without boundaries. Platonic philosophy was widespread and very influential in the ancient word, world. The use of the one as terminology for the highest divine principle arises from Platonism and was often used by Neoplatonic philosophers such as Platonus, who lived perhaps a century after the secret book of John was written. Nothing exists outside of it to border it. The one cannot be investigated. Nothing exists apart from it to investigate it. 
The one exists, the one cannot be measured. Nothing exists external to it, to measure it. The one cannot be seen, for no one can envision it. The one is, exter is eternal, for it exists forever. The one is inconceivable, for no one can comprehend it. The one is indescribable, for no one can put any words to it. The argument here is that the one is in perfect state of logistically beyond all knowledge, comprehension, and understanding. Such words imply a second being to have the knowledge, do the comprehending, and achieve the understanding, but there is no second being if the one is all. The one is infinite light, purity, holiness, stainless. The one is incomprehensible, perfect, free from corruption. Not perfect, not blessed, not divine, but superior to such concepts. This line of thought is what is called negative theology and can be traced back at least to Plato's Parimenes, the 380 BCE. To say that God is, quote, not perfect is not to claim that God is imperfect, but rather to deny that whatever concept you have in your mind regarding the meaning of perfect is adequate. Similarly, whenever you think of when you think divine is less than what God truly is, and accordingly, God is not divine. This is a discussion of the adequacy of language, not of God per se. God cannot be discussed. Buddhists teach often take the same approach in regarding to nirvana, declaring it inexpressible, inconceivable nature and inadequacy of language to discuss it. Neither physical nor unphysical, neither immense nor intestinal. Just as you cannot say God is divine, you cannot say God is physical. Having suggested that one is not whatever a human word would have it be, the text goes, goes on to offer a linguistic ploy. God both is in some ways and it is not in some ways. What human words would declare. In some ways God is physical, in some ways not, or to use double negatives, God is neither physical nor unphysical. Again, the discussion here is not about the nature of God, but about the nature of human language and its inadequacy in describing and discussing God. Not this, not that, the upshans about the Brahman neti neti. It is impossible to specify in quantity or quality, for it is beyond knowledge. The philosopher Ludwig Wechstein famously said, Woven man nietzsche speaking kann der have muss man swegen, which means that about which one cannot speak, about that one must be silent. But of course, theologians and mystics in both Eastern and Western traditions have recognized for millennia both that their language is inadequate and that they must nevertheless speak. Perfect discussion of God takes place in silence, and so the secret book of John begins by describing its contents as, quote, the revelation of mysterious hidden in silence. The one is not a being among other beings. The German philosopher Meiden Hedinger wrote, Das Sein des Seingern ist nicht Salbist in Seinstern, meaning that the meaning that the being of beings is not itself a being. That is one, the idea is a secret book of John is trying to communicate. The one is not a kind of being, but the underlying reality that sustains all beings. It is vastly superior, but it is not superior. It is outside of realms of being and time. For whatever is within realms of being was created, and whatever is within time had time allotted it to it. The one is superior to all, although one must remember that the human word superior is inadequate. The one transcends all conceptual categories, all categories of being and time. There is as yet no being uh, or, or time or space. For there is nowhere and no time outside the one, there is no outside or inside of the one. The one receives nothing from anything. It simply apprehends itself in its own perfect light. 
At this point of the text, we are still reading about the state of affairs before the Big Bang, when any notion of time is meaningless, but the next stage is the development of reality is about to take place. There is a hint of events to come in the notion of the one apprehending itself in its own light. Is the one that apprehends the same as the one who it is apprehended? The one is majestic. The one is measureless majesty, chief of all realms, producing all realms. We hear now the realm of the one and the realms within the realm. Some sort of structure is hinted at. The one is taking on form, however silent and incomprehensible it may be. The word realm is the translation of the Greek eon and is often retains as the Coptic version of the secret book of John. The word eon implies eternal time. It can mean a power existing from eternity, an emanation of God, and therefore a function component of God. As such, it is psychic space within the mind of God. Though, through the, the word realm, though the word realm is used here, there is no real single word that captures the full meaning of the text. You simply have to develop a sophisticated notion of what a, quote, realm functioning within the mind of God might be. Light producing light, life producing life, blessing producing blessing, ble blessedness producing blessedness, knowledge producing knowledge, good producing goodness, mercy producing mercy, generosity producing generosity. We are back now to language, to words using in reference to the one, but it's not appropriate to apply such words of life, blessedness, and knowledge to the one as if it were adequate categories. Rather, it is better to think of such things as proceeding from the one, but not constituting aspects of the one itself, implying that there is possibly a possibility of existence beyond the incomprehensible one. Into that possibility later on, all reality, the one sends forth generosity, mercy, goodness, and so forth. This is in accordance with middle Platonic philosophy. It gives forth light beyond measure, beyond comprehension. What can I say? The principal production of the one is light. To be thought of as a metaphor, whatever exists beyond the central dimensionless space of the one itself. That light is beyond comprehension, that it is supernal light, the light that Genesis speaks of prior to the creation of the sun and moon and stars. His realm is eternal, peaceful, silent, resting before everything. He is the head of every realm, sustaining each of them through goodness. Okay, just my little two cents here. If words cannot express what the God nature truly is, what God is, that is summed up right here with my avatar. This is something that I adopted several years ago to express the inexpressible God, the X. The true God has no name. Looking at my avatar, that is really all I need to say about this chapter. It's said quite well on its own that there is no expression of the oneness of God. There are no words that can truly comprehend what God is. That's why I use the X to describe the inexpressible God. That is why I use this avatar and I have been for several years now. In Brahmanism you have or in Hinduism, you have Brahman, uh, the inexpressible, the, it is the X. It's something beyond, and you can't describe, you can't put it in human words. It's indescribable. So we can see that Gnosticism aligns itself so much with other religions, even for the non-religious of us, the inexpressible oneness of the universe. Well, this is some deep stuff, and I hope that everybody is following and enjoying this. This is Entropy 666. And this is Lucifer. Signing out.